Ninja, welcome back once again. My name is Rhea and you're still watching Call Center Ninja. If you're new here, I share real stories and tips to help you begin, enjoy, and survive your call center lifestyle. So please consider subscribing. Just click the red subscribe button down below. And thank you so much if you have already subscribed. Today we are going to talk about how to create a simple but professional resume and i have two examples for you we will start with the sample resume for those who don't have work experience at all like if you are a fresh grad or if you are an undergrad and we also have a sample resume for those who have relevant work experience that is not really related to the call center industry and let's take a look at the entire format or the overall format of the resume. This is actually what I have used previously when I applied for different call center jobs. And if you are just starting out, and this is an entry level position, so with the overall format of the resume, as you can see, I used very clear and neat font. So here I used Arial. 16 for the name and the rest of the fonts I used 10. It's very important that your resume, the words and everything are clear and readable. So when I say clean and neat, it has to be free from any type of error such as grammar, spelling, formatting, alignment, um, indention, spacing, and everything because this is like the starting point of your application and you would want to present yourself as a professional because if you're unable to do something as simple as a resume then it might reflect on you as an applicant include all the necessary information or relevant information only and not clutter your resume with flowery words and other things that your employer, your interviewer really does not need to know about you. So again, it has to look professional. Now, this type of resume is applicable to those who are still starting or who are entry level on the job and might not be applicable if you are looking to have a targeted position like if you're targeting for a supervisor or a supervisor or manager role or any other higher position in the call center. Uh, I'd also like to emphasize that it would be best if you keep your resume to two pages, maximum two pages. If you can do it in one page, then it's also okay. If you are to use this format, and if you want to download this format from my blog after this video, then you can see that you can actually edit this right away once you download it. Okay, everything is editable. You just have to replace these uh, details with your own. Okay, you have to make sure that everything is complete. Now let's start with the header part. So very simple. It says your name, or in this case, Anastasia Steele, in bold letters and black, of course, just so you can highlight your name. And then make sure that all contact information and details are correct as of that moment <laughs> that you typed it. Uh, for example, the most important ones are your contact number or mobile number. You have your email address and make sure that your email address looks professional. The best way to go about it is to use your first name and your last name or anything that's close to your full name. Uh, don't create a very weird email like vanilla milkshake123 or sweetheart cupcake143 at gmail.com because those do not really sound professional and very and are very easy to forget. Although a lot of interviewers nowadays um, would contact you using your mobile number, it still doesn't hurt to create a professional email address that you can use now and in the future. Notice that I did not include a photo or a picture of me. I used to include a picture, actually. 
and I think there's nothing wrong with including a picture but uh, you don't really have to include it because anyway they will be asking for your one by one picture or two by two picture if they need it unless they specifically ask you to include your picture then go ahead and do so but if they don't which is most likely the case you don't have to include the picture moving on to the next part or section of the resume since you don't have relevant work experience or professional work experience just yet because you're just a fresh grad or you recently stopped uh, stopped studying you can start by highlighting your educational background because of course your interviewer needs to know that you actually attended school during the past few years or maybe recently so you can do it in a reverse chronological order, meaning you start with the most recent. So here I put the date, the range of dates. This is just an example, of course, June, 20, June 2013 to April 2017, for example, and you have the name of your school or university or college. Of course, I just made this up, University of Beauty and the Best. And you can also add in the city. And of course, since you are in the Philippines, you can also do away with the country. You can just put Cebu City. And you can add your major or your degree, such as in this case, Bachelor of Arts in Mass Communication. In most cases, you don't really have to add your high school or your grade school anymore because that has been a long time ago and most of the skills that you need to do your job are acquired from college or from your university but in my previous resumes I would always include my high school which is okay it doesn't really hurt your chances at all but I did not include my grade school anymore because that was such a long time ago and it's not really relevant anymore okay so you have your edu educational background so moving on this section is for your academic projects and volunteer work or if you have extracurricular activities you can also include those now this section is very important to highlight because you don't have professional work experience yet but you would want your employer or interviewer to know that you did something relevant or you did something really good in school back then maybe those work uh, maybe those academic projects and volunteer works are not totally related to your job it's okay as long as you know you prove to them that you actually did something if you notice i also added the dates or the inclusive dates when that academic project or volunteer work was done that's because you would want to make it look legit um, again i started with uh, the most recent for example you had a job internship you can add that here and then you can put here the name of the company where you had your internship for example 92.8 EYAA best radio just an example then the next one is your research study or undergraduate species which is your academic project and then you can add in the title of your research study or thesis so the example I have is the effects of social media on the communication style of the students of San Marino High School I just made this up mm -hmm. and then uh, move on to the rest of the volunteer work that you did. You don't have to really list down everything, just the ones that you have worked on for a significant period of time, or the ones that you really can say that um, this is something that I'm proud of, this is something that I really worked hard on, and with this academic project and volunteer work, I learned something that I can apply to my job. So. If you see, this is not just a list of your project or volunteer work. This is also a way for your interviewer or for your employer to know whatever skills you have acquired that you can apply to the job that you will have in the course. And then moving on to the next section, we have the general skills. You can list down the skills that you think you have. When you say skill, of course, it is 
something that you are good at or that you are doing well. It is your ability, your capability that you can say that you're confident of doing. Now, you don't have to be an expert of that certain thing, but at least list down the things that you know you can do satisfactorily. So here I listed some examples like satisfactory oral and written communication skills, ability to create letters, memos, reports, and email contents, proficient in basic computer applications and the internet, knowledgeable in communication styles and strategies, ability to speak with different types of people in an appropriate manner, ability to empathize during difficult situations. Now, notice that the general skills that I listed here are also related somehow to the type of job that I want to apply. For example, if I'm applying as a customer service specialist or a tech support specialist, at least my employer interviewer will know that I can speak well, that I know how to use the computer, I know how to use the internet, I can speak with different types of people, and I am able to empathize. So try to tailor fit your skills as well to the type of job that the call center has, which is mostly in the customer service or tech support industry. If, for example, if you're applying for a sales account and you know that it is really sales, then list down your skills that are related to something about sales. Right? I hope that makes sense. So there. But... Uh, anyhow, you can include any skills that you think are relevant. And the last section is the character references. Prepare at least three character references because HR or the interviewer will call those people to ask about you, um, how you are in school, what are your skills, and your behavior. Most likely, you will have to list uh, your professor's contact number, maybe your dean's contact number. And in this case, I included Brad Pitt. Pitt let's just say he was the supervisor from the internship program that I had with Best Radio. So don't forget to include the correct contact number and uh, the company as well. Okay, so name, company, and the position or designation of that certain person. If he was a supervisor, college of arts dean, or professor. Just a note, before you provide character references, make sure that you have already informed these people, these three people, beforehand. Inform them that you will include them as your character reference so that they won't be surprised once your interviewer calls them. I do receive some questions from viewers as to what type of objective they would put on their resume or how they would create it. Objectives in a resume The thing with applying in a call center is that it's like having a box of chocolates. You never really know what you're going to get. You don't really know where you will be assigned and what position will be given to you because you are applying as an entry-level uh, applicant or employee. You can be assigned in the customer service account or tech support, sales, chat support, email support, in a sense, you can say that you don't really have much choice even though you inform your interviewer that you'd like to be in customer service or sales or whatever you like because ultimately, it's their decision and it depends on how they see your skills as helpful for the job that they have in a particular account. And sometimes, it also depends on the number of people that they have to hire for a certain account. So if they're hiring for 30 people for a certain account and you happen to apply, so even though you're not particularly skilled in sales, you might still be assigned for sales because there will be training anyway. So that's how it goes. It really depends. 
Which brings me to my conclusion that you don't need to add an objective anymore. So now that we have gone through the entire resume, for those who don't have work experience, let's now move on to those with work experience. It is actually very similar. I just interchanged the first and the second sections. So everything that I explained for the first resume is the same as with the second resume. Since you have a work experience, even though it's not related to the call center industry, then you can choose to highlight your work experiences first in reverse chronological order. So to avoid changes with whatever you did on your resume, of course you will save it, right? So you save it with your own um, file name and then you can click export to PDF or in Microsoft Word, I think it's saved as PDF. So when you open the PDF file, it looks like this now. It's not editable anymore. You cannot, whatever you do, if you backspace or whatever, or delete, you can't delete it anymore. So this is a safe way to make sure that the formatting does not change when you have it printed at an internet cafe or wherever. Another example is when you need to submit it via email. It's also more professional looking because as you know, the formatting is very intact. So that's about it for today. As usual, if you like this content, please like, subscribe if you haven't. And I have videos every Wednesdays and Fridays. So see you again next time. Take care and bye-bye.